Immunotherapy is a very broad term uh, that covers the use of the immune system to help treat uh, cancer. The most successful immunotherapy uh, ever still is rituximab, a monoclonal antibody directed to, against B cells, which is effective in B cell lymphoma and has improved the overall survival of diffuse large B cell lymphoma, follicular lymphoma, marginal zone lymphoma, mantle cell lymphoma, and chronic lymphocytic leukemia and small lymphocytic lymphoma. That's one form of uh, immunotherapy that's using a monoclonal antibody and uh, having a target and then eliciting the body's own immune system. The other forms of uh, immunotherapy include checkpoint inhibition. Um, the immune system is very sophisticated. Um, we don't simply react to things. We have to have uh, ways to accelerate immune reactions, but we also have to have ways of turning them off. Because if those didn't exist, um, we would have uh, excess autoimmunity and our cells would be reacting with our own tissues. And then another exciting area of uh, uh, immunotherapy are what we call bispecific antibodies, um, antibodies that bind to a target uh, on the tumor cell and then a target on some effector cells, such as a, uh, a bispecific antibody that binds a T cell and a B cell and brings them together and fosters the activation of that T cell to kill the tumor cell. There are forms of cellular immunotherapy um, and uh, there's the exciting field of chimeric antigen receptor T cells. These are cells in which we're altering the biology of the T cell by introducing uh, a, a targeting molecule that can target, uh, in some cases, CD19 for the two approved agents, but we can make those chimeric antigen receptors target a whole wide range of different targets and kill not only lymphomas, but myelomas, uh, acute myeloid leukemia, and solid tumors as well. What you do is you create a artificial receptor that on one end binds to CD19, not normally a target of T cells, and then on the other end has the appropriate signaling apparatus to activate the T cell when the CD19 is engaged. And when we see engagement of the CD19, it signals and induces proliferation of the T cells and also killing of the target cell. These two processes are very important because now this is a living drug. We're actually administering a drug targeted against the uh, tumor, but has the potential to grow. These are living cells. The cells are prepared from the patient. In the current generation, we're looking at other ways of preparing these uh, cells, but currently we uh, remove T cells from a patient, expand them uh, in culture, then they are transduced with a, this chimeric antigen receptor, the manufacturing is completed, uh, quality assurance is done, and uh, that specific product is only appropriate now for the patient from whom the T cells were derived. Um, those are shipped back to the site um, where the patient is, and these cells are then administered. Because this is a living drug, um, and these are living cells, they're gonna do things that T cells do. Um, and one of the things that T cells do as they expand is they will uh, release cytokines, and that's uh, the underpinning of some of the important toxicity that we see, and that is the cytokine release syndrome, uh, which can be, uh, uh, have multi-organ effects, but uh, can be manifest by high fevers, low blood pressure, chills, um, frequently requires blood pressure support. It's not unheard of um, for patients to be admitted to the intensive care unit for a short period of time to manage the cytokine release syndrome. Different CAR T cells have different spectrum with respect to the cytokine release syndrome. Uh, we think some of this is related to the speed of expansion um, when the chimeric antigen receptor has a, a signaling domain from CD28 that results in more rapid expansion. An example of that 
is uh, axicaptogene silylucel, and this has very rapid expansion, um, and you get very early development of cytokine release syndrome. Tisagen leclucel has a, a 4-1-B-B uh, intracellular domain. The expansion is slower, um, and the, there's a little bit of a delay um, in cytokine release syndrome. There's also a second set of uh, toxicities, um, and there's uh, neurologic toxicities, um, can range from very mild, just being not quite right, to um, seizures. Quite intentionally, CAR T-cell therapy has limited availability um, at centers who have substantial expertise in cellular therapy. So a center that doesn't have a high-quality allogeneic bone marrow transplant program cannot be certified uh, for administration of CAR T cells. Initially, with axicaptogene silylucel, only 17 centers were approved. The plan was to expand that to 75 centers. This is a relatively new form of therapy. There's a clear learning curve um, for the staff, not only the physicians, but the, the nurses, the pharmacists, um, and uh, uh, and the trainees, and they all need to understand that this is a unique form of therapy. Um, and so uh, ex the experience of the center is important in selection of a place to receive this treatment. CAR T cells are effective. They're not perfect, but what we're seeing is uh, a impressive uh, long-term uh, sustained remission um, in patients in the range of 30 to 40 percent of the patients treated. Now, we all recognize that that is not an ideal number. Um, but at the same time, we know that the patients who have been enrolled to these trials are, have highly refractory, very poor risk disease. So we're trying to explore where these drugs fit in the future. Um, and there are important randomized prospective trials going on to ask whether uh, CAR T cells should replace high dose therapy in autologous stem cell rescue or what some people call uh, autologous stem cell transplant. One of the things I think that patients should be asking is again, what is the experience? How does the institution uh, uh, deal with? Uh, these side effects and toxicities and how uh, comfortable is the institution in dealing with patients who've received CAR T cells. The Lymphoma Research Foundation is an important source of information for patients at any stage of their treatment uh, in lymphoma, whether it's newly diagnosed or relapsed refractory disease. But when it comes to highly specialized treatments like CAR T cells, that's where the uh, LRF can be particularly helpful because they have the resources and have the connections to know where the active programs are, where the effective programs have been, where the clinical trials are being conducted. Because, you know, someone with mantle cell lymphoma who calls up and says, I want CAR T cells, well, None of the commercial drugs are actually approved for that, but the LRF is going to know uh, where to refer that patient for the appropriate trial.